person would circle a date on the calendar some 30 years later when they could retire, nice. make decisions, and hold ourselves responsible. And from there, all this stuff makes sense then. Hi, and welcome to ModernServantLeader.com. I'm here today with Dennis Backey, the author of Decision Maker, Unlock the Potential of Everyone in Your Organization, One Decision at a Time, and the New York Times bestseller, Joy at Work. Dennis is also the CEO of Imagine Schools and was the co-founder and CEO of AES, a global power supply company, Fortune 200. Dennis, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my privilege. Dennis, I first learned about your work when uh, I was introduced to your book through Steve Vanderveen, the uh, head of the Center for Leadership at uh, Hope College, and I really enjoyed that book. But when I learned about Decision Maker, I was really impressed with how, to me, you hit the nail on the head. You know, in all the work I do here at ModernServantLeader.com about servant leadership and employee engagement, you know, it just never, I never really heard anybody talk quite the same way about the importance that decision making and empowering decision making through the organization makes. Can you tell me a little bit about how you came across that concept and what decision making means to you? I was, I was uh, just starting uh, our first power plant, an old, old power plant in Pennsylvania. Uh, and I, I, I was, uh, I, I, I would go in in the middle of the night, actually, uh, because I, I'd go to uh, had a board meeting at, at Geneva College, and uh, and I would I would go to the plant, and I sat. I would uh, go to the uh, the operating office and walk around with a few people. There's a you know there's in a power plant in the night. It's only you know five, six, ten people, uh -huh. uh, uh, and so I got a good chance to listen. And one of the things I heard was that, that just you know, really stunned me, was that in my power plant, uh, every time a person came to work, new person, mm -hmm. it didn't happen too often, but when I did come to work, I was told that within a few months, that person would circle a date on the calendar some 30 years later when they could retire. I said, uh-oh, mm -hmm. this is before joy to work, but mm -hmm. it, no, it, it it really struck me. I said, "We really wanted to have fun. We wanted to. Uh, we, I wanted my partner and I wanted this to be a, you know, a, a joyful place to to work." And and then my first my first operating power plant, it was obviously no joy at work. And mm -hmm. so that started me on this this journey of trying to figure out what it was. What was the essence of that needed to change mm -hmm. to to make the. Uh, Make it a joyful place, mm -hmm. uh, and no one really, not very many people think about that. I guess. I mean, you know, the Harvard School they didn't teach us <laughs> about joy at work, uh, and and so some people don't think it's very important. But to mm -hmm. me, it was a it was a big thing, uh, and so that's that's what got me started. And I I uh, I realized the main thing that just the main uh, uh, thing that would would change this thing is. Is I, as I realized that as human beings, the main thing we do and are is that distinguishes from all the uh, animals is our ability to think, reason, make decisions, mm -hmm. and then hold ourselves responsible. Nice, nice. Make decisions and hold ourselves responsible. And from there, all this stuff makes sense then. Okay, so then I've got to maximize the number of chances for people in the workplace to make important decisions and hold themselves responsible. And that will be, that will lead to joy at work. Excellent. That's the decision maker's message. Excellent. Excellent. It, we all have a certain number of synapses in our, in our brain. Uh -huh. and, and what happens is that when you're, when the boss is making all the decisions, you don't get to use them. <laughs> I, mean, I like that. Really, you're just, I like you're, that. You're, you're not, you're almost subhuman. You think about that. Yeah. And, and uh, that's why it's, it's 
no fun. I mean, no one wants to be subhuman, right? Right, right. We created to be joyful, filled with the ability to think, reason, make decisions. That's the whole point. Yep. I realized. Uh, and at home, you know, uh, homemakers, moms love it because they, they have that opportunity. Why do they, you know, you think, man, it's a hard job being a parent. But you, yeah. you we love it because so you, then you go down to the, the, the workshop, you know, down to the power plant. It's no fun at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it, it just, uh, the stories I heard, you know, it, 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 you work at my power plant and, and you know, you want to, you, you want to get out of there as, you know, as soon as you can, but 30 or 40 years, I yeah. got tired and I'm out of there. I mean, it's terrible. Yeah. And so that's, that's how, that's how I really learned and, and then started this journey of, okay, well, what is it that is the key to, to enjoy at work? You know, and it's, Oh, a human being, our main thing we can do that no one else can do is our ability to think, reason, make decisions, hold ourselves responsible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that, it's simple. It's yeah. not all these fancy things that everybody, you know, get all the management experts put, put together. It's this very simple, simple thing. That's why the book, I try to make it very simple. It's a, it, it's a, obviously a, a fictional uh, account, mm -hmm. uh, but it has very important things and and of course it doesn't mean things perfect you know everything's going right. to be very much uh it's part of life we're, we're not perfect people we don't have perfect bosses we're right not perfect, uh, perfect people who are going to work none of us are so you're going to have all kinds of issues and problems but the issue the thing you can do uh and it'll make a huge difference is just to allow uh the people not the bosses to to make most of the decisions It means, and this is really hard for me, it means that, you know, I went to Harvard Business School, you know, to, to, to learn how to make decisions, really. I mean, that's <laughs> essentially what all is. And we're thinking, we're God's gift at decision-making. <laughs> right, right. I mean, and so, uh, and of course we can do it better than anybody else, right? Oh, I mean, of course. Uh, you know, there's an arrogance that when most educated folks, uh, we, and we get paid more, and all kinds of stuff that says, well, we need to make decisions. So the first thing you have to do to make this work, you got to get over that uh, and start thinking about a, a servant leader is one who who puts themselves in a position that, you know, don't stop thinking or don't stop, but you have to stop making all the decisions so that you allow, you lift other people up by, uh, not by being nice to them, obviously you can do that too, and mm -hmm. treat them you know, with, with all the books talk about being nice essentially and treating employees nice. It's only one thing you really have to do. That is, you have to treat them like a human being. That is, respect the fact the essence of a human being is our ability to think, reason, make decisions, and then hold ourselves responsible. Mm -hmm. And that's what a leader needs to do, mm -hmm. is, to, is to allow a person to be a human being. It's real simple. It's yep. not some, you don't have to go to the Harvard Business School to learn this. In fact, you learn just the opposite there. <laughs> <laughs> Very well put. <laughs> It's a bit of a subtle uh, change and one that uh, people get a bit concerned about because you have to make money. Absolutely. You have to make a profit. Yep. You have to, that, that goes to the investors who are every bit as important as the employees. Yep. But they're not more important. That's the big problem. Exactly. They're all of equal importance. Uh, and so you, they, you, just, you can't just do everything just for the shareholder. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm a shareholder in lots of things, and I know that I know this. I do. I knew not as a shareholder. And I'm not. Uh, I'm not the only person in the in the in the deal. Mm. I mean, I the the people who work at at our company now are are just as important, and and being, they don't get paid the same necessarily, mm -hmm. but they get they have respect, and they get they get to make decisions just like uh, I do. Uh, and the way to do that, of course, is bosses have to restrain their their proclivity to make all the decisions. Yeah. I, I said arbitrarily, okay, I'm going to limit mine to one significant decision a year. And obviously people say, oh, you don't really do that. Well, I don't know whether I, I certainly, uh, in the significant decisions, I really try to 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 move them around and, uh, and, uh, and let 
other people do it. They get a little frightened sometimes, but they come away a much different person because mm -hmm. they're being treated as a real person. Yep. Yeah. Why, why do homemakers love their job? You think about that. Mm -hmm. It's it's a tough. I mean, you think about. It. Oh yeah. Especially women who are homemakers. Uh, and you see, wait a minute. They're, it's it's terrible. They all they're doing is you know working all day long. You know, you know cooking food and everything. Lots of poopy diapers. <laughs> just, because first of all, they love they love what they're doing. Yeah. But they but they it is it obviously you get tired and you need help and you want to be encouraged and everything else. But they you don't see a lot of them complain about the work itself because they're doing it out of love. Mm -hmm. And they 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 have control. Yep. Yep. So and it's not it's not just we're not just talking here about you know, businesses, uh, the traditional business. This is a, this is life. We all are created in a way that we have the capability of making decisions and holding ourselves responsible for that. Yes, definitely. I've had that question many times, and I don't really have great great answers for it because it is extremely difficult. Yeah. yeah. But what you can do is, you. I mean, if you can't. Teach, or you're not at the you know the the sweet C-suite level mm -hmm. of the, uh, in a in a company. You just start with where you are. Mm -hmm. uh, you you have to you have to okay. I have maybe you, I have two people or three people who work with me. Uh, maybe I'm the you know the office manager of you know of three or four people. Then you you have you you start just there and say okay I'm going to operate this way in our little office. Hmm. Or this little division, yeah. Uh, or uh, then I mean, this is a leadership thing, so it, it doesn't. Obviously, every individual would like to have it themselves, but the only time you get a chance to really make change is if you are a leader, hmm. an official leader. I mean, you can teach about it, try to yep. get people to to talk about it, but but you can do that here in your own little group, and hmm. and be surprised. Sometimes it starts to spread. Somebody else gets a hold of it. Yeah. Uh, your your boss says, "Ooh, these people seem to be a lot happier." And you know, we haven't had a person leave here in a year and a half. And you know, what what's going on here? Yeah. Not usually. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. usually happen that way. It's very difficult. Much easier if you happen to be the senior person in the whole organization. Sure. But you can do it. You can yeah. use your particular. You have three people who you're working with or responsible. For, start yeah. there. And it's so most. Most businesses, most organizations are small, right? Yep. And and you can do this. It, and those are some of the worst. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, because they so, the more you, they you know, uh, it, it changing a big big organization, uh, you can only do it by one little piece at a time. And eventually, somebody says, "Okay," or else they fire you. And you, you that's the only thing. Other thing, if you're going to do this, yeah. you better prepare to lose your job. I mean, because wow. people get really uptight about it. Wow. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. But that's usually at the higher levels, and not not right. Not at the not at the lower levels where you you can actually you can actually do this if you're a, you know you have three people responsible. You yeah. Know, you're responsible for you can do this. Yeah, but that's really what leadership comes down to, right? I mean, you you realize what's right and you do what's right, even though the risk to you might be very high. And I so I think that was very frank, but it's a very poignant. Important note, yeah. And, and I think moms um, get this better than anybody else, um, or parents will say, mm -hmm. get it, is that they understand that if they don't, you know, if they make all the decisions forever mm -hmm. until the kid gets that leaves home, and usually they'll leave home quicker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, with that. But basically, that's. That's what a lot of parents do. Yeah. No, no, but most of them don't. Most of them, actually, many of them these days go the opposite way and don't even don't even guide. They let them go and you, know, mm -hmm. you just go by yourself. That doesn't work either. No, so, no. But leadership is can be started right in the home. You know, in terms of teaching folks their responsibility and that they get to make decisions. So you let them gradually making more and more decisions on their own. Absolutely. That's exactly the same that a company would do if they were doing the right thing. Yep. Parents and good corporate leaders are exactly the same in that respect. Excellent analogy. I like that. 
Well, thank you again, Dennis, for joining us. I really appreciate your time. And uh, for all the readers and subscribers of Modern Servant Leader, there will be a contest for to win a free copy of Dennis's book. Uh, please read the comments below. The details will be there. And uh, again, thank you, Dennis. Appreciate thank your time. You. I enjoyed it immensely. Take care. Take care.